Dearly beloved, we are blessed to have you join us again in the study of God's holy and divine word. I want you to know that the Lord loves you and he cares about you and he wants to be your inspiration in this life today. But one of the greatest um, acts, I believe, uh, of God is to send his son who died for us and died in our place. But not only did he die in our place, but he also gave us tools and weapons in order that we might be able to battle against the will and the works of the enemy in the earth today. And if you and I will simply just look in God's word and get an understanding of God's word, we will truly see that God has provided us with all the tools that is necessary in order that we might live a victorious life on this side. The Father desired that we live in victory, beloved. He truly desired that. And that is the reason that we are here today uh, as born-again believers, so that we can stand on the Word of God and we can trust the Word of God. Because remember, Jesus Christ uh, is the Word. When Jesus Christ came into this earth, before there was no Jesus Christ, the Word became flesh. And that flesh that was in this earth was Jesus Christ. But the Word is what has power. The Word is what has authority. So if we take the Word and we hide it in our heart, then we have the ability to stand against the wild and the deceptions of the devil. Because, dearly beloved, your mind is the battlefield for the devil. The devil desires to steal your mind. And once he has stolen your mind, he steals your will even to think about the idea of serving God. And once he steals your will, all left now is to eliminate your fate. Eliminate your fate. So the Satan's number one desire in our reality, if you are a Christian, a born-again believer, is simply to take away your desire, your will, to believe God. And that simply means he desired to take away your faith. He wants to take away your faith. He wants to make every believer an unbeliever. Amen? That's what he wants to make you. He don't want to make you a drug addict. He doesn't want to make you a alcoholic or an adulterer or a great sinner against God. That's not really what he desired to do because he knows that you can be delivered from those things. But he knows one thing that you cannot be delivered from, and that is the act of living in defeat and living without faith, not truly trusting and believing God. You know, there are many today that say that they truly believe God, they acknowledge Him as God, but really deep down in their heart, they really don't. And when they go through troubles in their lives and they say they call upon the name of the Lord, they truly don't. And they rather take things on their own rather than truly trusting in God and trusting in His Word. And you cannot trust in His Word if you do not have His Word uh, in your heart, where, it might, uh, where the Holy Spirit might use it to bring it to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit cannot bring something to your remembrance that you don't have already in your heart. If what you have in your heart is the nature of this world, then that's exactly what will come out of you in the time of trouble. And you will not trust and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to in, in other words, and to help you through what you're going through, even though many believe that, they are really believing and trusting. But their actions speaks much louder than their words. But, dearly beloved, when you look at uh, the battlefield of the mind, uh, and that's where the battle takes place at uh, for the souls of men, in the mind. That's exactly what Satan wars against, is your mind, because he wants to capture you. He wants you to actually serve him. And if you desire not to serve him, he wants to make sure that you don't believe in the God of heaven. That you believe that it's simply a fictitious book the Bible is. Uh, and it doesn't make much sense whatsoever. 
And there are many people today who have that type of attitude. But I want you to know today, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you read the Word, if you study the Word of God, you will see that the Lord God has made provisions for us who are His children. And not everybody who say, Lord, Lord, is a child of God. But as Jesus said, those who believe and those who do the will of my Father which is in heaven. But what we want to uh, talk about just for a moment is the, uh, the idea of that we are in a battle today. And that battle is against principalities and spiritual forces in high places. And we have to acknowledge that, that we are not battling against flesh and blood, but we are battling against forces that are in high places that desire to entrap our minds and get our minds focused upon worldly things rather than on godly things, or worldly desires rather than on the things of God. The Word tells us to set our affections above where Christ is and not upon the things of this earth. Because many times our affections are set in on things on this earth rather than upon <coughs> God, <coughs> excuse me, our Father. Look what the Word says in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, beginning at the tenth verse. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Now, Paul is telling you and I, and believers, that we must be strong. And he desire that we be strong above all things. But what does he say? Strong in the Lord. Not strong in our own ability. Not strong in our own selves and what we think that we can do. But rather he said be strong in the Lord. So in order for me to be strong in the Lord, that means that I have to get his word <clears throat> on the inside of me. Because his word is what gives me strength. His word is what gives me understanding in this life today. It's only through His word, beloved. There's no other way that you can get the strength of the Lord. Because remember, as we said earlier, Jesus Christ was the living word. In other words, He was the Father literally in the flesh. Because He was the word of the Father. Whatever the Father spoke, He became a part of or He done because He was actually the word sent from heaven that became flesh and when we get an understanding of what that really means we understand that God himself as the word says Emmanuel with us God with us the word was with us so as Paul writes here he says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord so when we put His Word in our heart, then we have the ability to be able to stand strong in the things of God. And when we don't put His Word in our heart, then we are unable to be able to stand against the devil and his schemes that's in this earth or the people that he uses in this earth. And I want you to know today, dearly beloved, that the enemy is using people today in order to hinder the works of God or to hinder the works that God has prepared for you to do in this earth. Satan sends alone his helpers in order to hinder God's plan for his life that you can never be the best that you can be in this life because of the hindrances that Satan has set before you. He set roadblocks in places where you did not expect him to set them. And he uses people in order to do just that. But dearly beloved, we need not fall for it because we can stand against the wiles and the works of the devil. But one of the first things that we have to acknowledge as a born again believer is this, that as a soldier, we must acknowledge that there is a war going on. 
I believe that many believers do not believe that there is a spiritual war going on that is manifesting itself to, through the flesh. They don't even recognize that. So they go about life as though life is just is to be normally lived and they call themselves a believer. But you, if you are a believer today, Satan is warring at your mind. And if he has not uh, uh, captured you already, he is, uh, he is battling against you each and every day. Because dearly beloved, he hates you. He hates you with a passion because of who you belong to. So you have to acknowledge, first of all, that you are in a war. That there is a war zone that you are living in today when you are living in this earth today. And he's warring against your mind with lies, with deception, uh, with false teachers and false doctrines. He's using these things in order to and cap to capture your mind that he might control it through fear and that he might dominate you. Yes, he used fear. Fear is one of his greatest tools. If you look at the, uh, the, the, the television stations today, and no matter what, which one they are, CNN, Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, it doesn't make no difference. CNBC, it doesn't make any difference. When you listen to that and you allow that to fill your mind, that fills your mind with fear. And when you have fear, comes hatred after fear. Because you're hating people because of what the fear mongers are sharing with you. But I want you to know today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are a born again believer, then you need to stand on the word of God. Shut off the hate mongers and let the hate mongers or the hate merchants, you might say, that's uh, selling uh, their hatred out into the earth. Step away from that and stand upon the word of God and trust the word of God and believe the word of God to be your deliverer. And I say to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father will do just that for you. But first of all, we must acknowledge that there is a war against <clears throat> our mind and that we are in a battle zone. Now, we must also acknowledge who we are fighting. Who actually is our enemy? Is the enemy the people that are around us? No. It's not the people that are around us. Even though we can see them, we can touch them, we can recognize the things that they are doing that may be evil, but it is not because them alone, it is what is motivating them to do what they're what they're doing and that is the prince and the power of the air and that is the, the satanic forces that are in the air today that are causing people to battle against one another to have people walk in fear to have people to walk in doubt and unbelief so we have to acknowledge that this warfare is not against people but it's against spiritual forces and powers that are in high places we are simply battling against demonic spirits and if you're going to battle against demonic spirits you cannot battle them in the flesh you must battle them in the spirit and by the spirit and that's what we will be sharing with you this particular day how you are called to battle and fight against the enemy of your soul. And ultimately, remember this. Satan desired to steal your fate. As we said, he doesn't desire to make you a drug addict. He doesn't desire to make you one who uh, 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 is an adulterer or fornicator or some sinner of that nature because he knows that you can ultimately be delivered from that. But what his major goal is to get you to walk as an unbeliever. In other words, not believing God. Yes, stating that you are from your lips, but in reality, when trouble comes, you trust in the arm of the flesh rather than <clears throat> upon the spirit of the living God. And that's what Satan wants to make every believer into an unbeliever. 
In other words, confessing the Lord's with their mouth, but their heart becomes far away from Him because they're not believing that He is able to do what He said that He can do. But look, when Paul writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Not in the power of your might, but in the power of His might. You know, as the Word tells us in the Word of God, that it's not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. It is by His Spirit that things are done in this earth. It is by His Spirit that we trust and believe that all things are possible. And if you are a born-again believer, then you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you. And that is called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. That is the power of God living on the inside of you that will give you the power to overcome, will give you the power to be able to stand against the works of Satan. But first, we must get the word on the inside of us. Because, dearly beloved, no matter how much wisdom we have, if we don't get understanding, we have got nothing at all. Because without understanding, we cannot stand against Satan and his works. So we have to get an understanding. So my prayer is that when you study God's word, when you look at God's word and you acknowledge God's word, that you get an understanding of your heavenly father so that you become familiar with him. Not familiar with the doctrines of men, as many will try to teach you, but rather familiar with the Lord Jesus Christ by the spirit of the Lord. And in turn, you become familiar with your Heavenly Father. And dearly beloved, that's what it's all about. <clears throat> Becoming familiar with your Heavenly Father. And look what the Word says in the 11th verse of that 6th chapter of the book of Ephesians. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So what we acknowledge here, we acknowledge that we need to put on the whole armor of God. So that let you and I both know that there is armor for you and I. Because the Word tells us this. And that's why it's important to study the Word of God. Because the Word of God teaches us how to stand in this earth. How to live this life. The Word of God is the manual for human living on planet earth. It doesn't tell us how to live in heaven. It tells us how it will be one day on the new earth and the new heavens. But it doesn't tell us how to live because we learned our living down here on planet earth right now. The earth that we are living in right now. Now look what the word of God tells us to put on what the whole armor of God. So what we do, we acknowledge that there is armor for you and I that we might battle against the enemy. So if the Word of God tells us that there is armor, that must be means also there is a need for putting on armor. Amen? There's a need for it. If there was no need for it, then the Lord would not even put it in His divine Word. He would rather just say, well, walk in life just as you are. Don't concern yourself with the battle that is going around you because there truly is no battle. And that's the lie that Satan wants us to believe, that there actually is no battle at all. <clears throat> We're just simply living our lives trying to get to the other side. And that is just not the truth. We're not as when one looks at television and one sees a war zone, you not only see soldiers that are warring, but many times you see civilians that are caught in the middle of the battles. And even though they don't have guns and even though they don't have weapons, they are many times killed in the midst of battle. And they consider that or call that uh, 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 collateral damage. 
where individuals are actually killed who are not actually part of either armies whatsoever, but they're civilians. Well, dearly beloved, the Lord God don't want us just to be civilians. He wants us to be actually warriors. And that's why he gives us this particular thing right here when he says to us, put on the whole armor of God. And as we delve deeper into this study, we will learn how to put on the whole armor of God. But first we have to acknowledge that we need armor. <clears throat> we have to acknowledge that our Father desire to show us the armor and to show us how to put on the armor. But first we have to acknowledge that we are in a battle. We are in a spiritual battle, not only for our own souls, but for the souls of other individuals, the souls of our family members, the souls of our children, the souls of our spouses, the souls of our leaders of this country, the leaders <clears throat> within our fellowships. The enemy is battling for their souls. The enemy desire to steal every bit of faith from all of us that we will become unbelievers. Now the word of God says that the devil or demons trembles at God. They tremble at the acknowledgement of God because they recognize his power. They recognize his authority because they can actually sense it in the spirit realm because they live in the same spirit realm that God the Father lives in. But we don't. We are in this flesh bodies that's living upon this earth. But we're not uh, walking as spirit beings because we are fleshly beings. But we war in the spirit by the spirit that liveth on the inside of us. And that's why we have to acknowledge that there is such a thing as a spiritual warfare that is happening right now amongst us. And dearly beloved, I say to you today in the name of Jesus Christ that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. And the devil does not have the authority to defeat you. You have to give Satan the permission by simply ag not acknowledging the word of God, not acknowledging the will of God, not acknowledging that the Lord says that you are in a fight. You are in a battle as long as you live on this side of planet Earth. You will be in a battle for your soul or your fate. For Satan desire to steal your fate. And even as the word of God says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So that is letting you and I know this, that we are unable to stand against the wiles of the devil on our own. We don't have the power. We don't have the, 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 the wisdom. We don't have the, the knowledge. We don't have anything within ourselves to be able to stand against a spiritual being like Satan in this day. We just don't have it. We get it from our Lord and our God who puts it in his word that we might hide it in our heart. And so that when Satan comes against us, we know without a shadow of a doubt that we have a spiritual armor on that will protect us and guide, especially our minds away from the will of the enemy. And many people are falling uh, uh, to the wayside because of that lack of that acknowledgement of the Word of God. If you desire to live your life as a civilian in a warfare, then dearly beloved, you can be one of them that will have collateral damage done to you or your family. But if you stand on the Word of the Living God and you believe the Word of the Living God, I say to you today that you will become more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves you. But it comes through the word. It comes through acknowledging the word and believing the word to be true. And if you believe the word to be true today, then you will seek into 
what it is about this whole armor that the Lord God is calling you and I to uh, put on so that we might stand against the wiles and the tricks of the devil. In ourselves, we cannot stand against the wiles and the tricks of the devil. He's just too smart for us. But one thing we know in the name of Jesus Christ, that if we understand God's word and we acknowledge the word of the living God, we will be able to walk in the power and the authority that he has invested in us. And he has invested in us in this, in the word. And as Paul writes, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not in our own might, but rather in his might. Stand in his might, stand in his power. And I say to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, there is no demon, no devil from hell that will be able to stop you from doing the works and the will of the living God. Believe that, dearly beloved, today. Believe it, trust it, and know that you can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens you.